Hey y'all, welcome to the Anxiety Warriors podcast. We are your hosts, Margo and Abby. We are friends, teachers, and storytellers, but above all, we're anxiety warriors on a mission to raise awareness and understanding about anxiety and mental health. You will hear honest, engaging, and joyful stories from us and many other anxiety warriors about living with anxiety. If you're seeking a space to laugh, connect, feel inspired and empowered, and learn valuable tips rooted in mindfulness and more, your warrior community is here for you. Join us as we navigate this journey of life together. Welcome back, warrior family. We're here to talk about anxiety. Yes. Woo. Warriors, welcome back. Excited that you're joining us again today. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm, <laughs> it's like the best sound. <laughs> the, I, I've told you, I've said it many times. We yeah. do it in the house all the time. Like all the time. Mm-hmm. Adam more than me, but all the time. Um, okay. Sometimes warriors, anxiety is a little Just bit wants to have fun. Oh, Sometimes yeah. a little bit of a bitch. Yeah. Sometimes she's, she's hard on us. Sometimes she's given us the business. Sometimes we're giving them the business. Sometimes we just want to like not and just lay down on the floor or in the bed or in the corner or take a child's pose or whatever mm-hmm. for like the rest of the day, the rest of your year, the rest of your life. And then other times, anxiety, anxiety can be fun. Kind of fun. Yeah. So interesting to think yeah. about. I mean, we recently talked about the Inside Out 2 episode mm-hmm. and we talked a little bit about do we talk about reframes? I feel like we talked about a, a little bit, right? A little bit. And so, you know, that kind of inspired today's chat of how can we reframe anxiety, right? Because um, yeah. it's so easy to talk about all the big, heavy anxieties we have out there with life and living, uh, with yeah. things happening in the media. And mm. instead of going that way, we thought, hey, sometimes anxiety can be fun. Mm-hmm. Okay. So say more. What do you yeah. mean? Yeah. So, I mean, a couple ideas came to mind when I thought of this, right? Cause I was like, all right, what's another topic. And the first idea that came to mind was like, um, I've been doing trivia a lot with some friends. We've gone like mm-hmm. three or four times now. It's like every Thursday, if anyone wants to join. Um, and it's a little stressful. It's a little anxiety producing. Uh, Do you know the answer? Are you sure about the answer? How many points do you want to wager on the answer? But it's all fun. It's lighthearted, but there is anxiety. Sometimes there's sweating. Sometimes there's overthinking. Sometimes there's wanting to win and be perfect, right? But it's all fun anxiety, right? Mm. Like it's it's the anxiety as a motivator. It's an anxiety as like a, we're all in this together, right? Ah. So we're feeling that tension, but- we don't need to lay down on the floor in a child's pose. Right. Right. And so it sounds yeah. like competition. I mean, it's just light competition. In that sense. But then sure. I was thinking about, um, uh, I think the last time I mentioned how I had like a hot ones date with a bunch of friends, right? Where we were eating mm-hmm. hot sauce. Like we weren't eating hot sauce, but hot sauce on. You're just drinking the hot just sauce. Just drinking hot sauce. <laughs> sounds and like again, a shitty game. Oh, well, that sounds awful. Especially right. like. Literally say, a shitty game. If, if, <laughs> yes. <laughs> The yeah, next you're, day. <laughs> yeah. If you're just drinking hot sauce, stuff. you're you're inviting new types of anxiety. God. <laughs> and sensations in your belly. Oh. I don't know if anyone knows the show Hot Ones, but you know the one, the bomb, like the, the hot sauce that everyone always never wants to have. And it's horrible. Well, that was in our game. Right. And so, again, there's that there's no competition in this one. We're just eating hot wings with varying levels of hot sauce until it gets really super hot. Mm. And there's the anxiety of taking a bite and tasting it. There is that anxiety, but it's fun because we're all doing it together. It's fun to laugh about. It's fun to like lose sensation in your mouth and cry, you know, like, (laughs) yes, sounds great. (laughs) So fun. Anxiety right before you take that bite. And then there's the release. And so I thought that was fun. And then from there, what I was thinking about is like, Um, I was thinking about like, for me, when I would go on first dates that felt promising, like I definitely had some social anxiety. I definitely Mm -hmm. had some like overthinking, like, you know, meeting someone new and this and that, but there is also mixed in with that, like the, what if, like, what if this really works out? And so then I thought like, well, this also works with new friends. There is that anxiety around meeting new people, right? 
especially if they feel like a promising new friend, right? Yeah. So it's exciting, but there's also the anxiety of like, what if they don't like me? What if they reject me? What if they don't want to hang out again? Right. And so yeah. there's this like this, this tension of, of, pleasant and unpleasant sensations of anxiety in those moments. So those are the things mm. that I was thinking about when I was thinking about how anxiety can be fun. Yeah, that's interesting. It's like it. everything you're saying reminds me of like the joyful parts of anticipation, mm-hmm. right? It's like- Which we're talking about anticipation anxiety in the bad way. Yeah, right, yeah. exactly. And so it just mm-hmm. sounds, right, it sounds like the, the joyful part of that, like mm-hmm. how anticipating something can be exciting. Mm-hmm. Like it reminds me of like feeling excited or like that nervous energy before you try something new or have an interesting conversation or, you know, or the the anticipation of doing something that's out of a comfort zone or whatever. And that's kind of, when you mentioned this topic, that's kind of like where my mind went, mm-hmm. which is this like, and now that isn't always fun. <laughs> And so I'm like, wait, but if the element of fun has to be there, right, What what's different? What's different about that then? Because mm. it's sometimes when you're stepping out of a comfort zone, if everything works out, maybe it feels fun in like sort of like hindsight, like that was fun or that went better than I expected or, you know, as well as I expected or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so then that joy becomes the fun, I guess, or the, the relief mm-hmm. feels like fun. Mm -hmm. or something um yeah and so that's kind of where where I got like every time I thought of an example I was Mm -hmm. like but it's only fun after if it went well ah see like yeah I I totally I hear what you're saying and I agree that the outcome does kind of change it and I feel like still it doesn't take away like, especially like, like with dating, right? Like uh, when you're meeting that person for the first time, like I've had like a number of times where like a friend set me up with someone and they're like, oh, you'd be perfect for each other. Right. And there's like all this anxiety about meeting the person, right? Like the Mm -hmm. butterflies and the overthinking and what am I wearing? And you know, what are they going to be like? But there is this element of fun in it, right? As opposed to dread. Um, so even if the date didn't go well and afterwards it's like, all right, that kind of sucked or, you know, that was boring or no, I'm not going to do that again. Right. It didn't take away from the, like, I wouldn't even say it was excitement. Right. Cause it was a form of social anxiety, but it was like social anxiety, but, but with mixed with hope. Hmm. And that kind of made the experience right before the experience fun. Okay. So then it's still just about whatever leads up to the experience, mm-hmm. right? There's, that makes that type of anxiety fun. It's like you're venturing into an unknown without dread, as you said. That's a yes. great way of putting it. It's like yes. you're venturing into whatever it is. And like, if you go back to the trivia example, what my question was going to be was if you were doing the trivia by yourself, would that be fun? No, no. It's hard trivia. You need a group for it. What if, if it I were knew easy? all the answers, what if it were it would easy be fun. Training? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. that, right. So it's about, it's about then how challenging the circumstances are, right. For your, for just yourself versus you and a group of people that you trust or are yeah. gaining trust with or whatever. So that's an interesting element too. It's like, is, does it require sometimes there to be the presence of an other person or people for mm-hmm. the anxiety to be fun? Um, yeah, I think at least the idea that the other person or people would, would like, like it can be fun anxiety leading up to the event, but the event also has to, I think, include other people. Maybe. I don't know. I have to think about it now. Right. That was a good question. Yeah. Like in these situations, yes, it included some other person at some point, but the anxiety was the fun not in trivia. Trivia, the anxiety is like after each question or before each question, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, hot ones, it was like right before the bite, right? So in that sense, it was like not really with people, but you're doing it with people, right? But I think there was still something fun about about to like eat something really spicy and like you're kind of terrified and you're worried about the next day and you're thinking all these different overthinking thoughts, but also it's kind of fun to feel that because like mm. it's so low stakes. Interesting. Interesting. So like, 
So you're saying that if it was just you eating the wing by yourself, that it would still have been fun, just different. Yeah, I think so. Okay, that's yeah. interesting, right? Yeah. Because then it, it really is then some things is what, what I'm saying, what we're getting at, right? Is this like some things might be considered like fun, excited or nervous energy, anxiety or whatever before trying something or doing something doesn't matter that there is a group experience happening. It could just be that like, ah, you're not sure about this one experience, but you're interested in it, right? Yes. And so that yes. interest is what makes it fun. Yes. Because here, okay, so another example that is not it, right? This is not what I'm talking about when anxiety is fun. This is not it. This is like anxiety was intense and then the fun thing happened um, was I went skydiving like almost 20 years ago, right? And it was in a helicopter and I was fucking terrified. Like the anxiety was super fucking high. I can't even explain how bad the anxiety was <laughs> how you got into a helicopter in the first place with yeah. the intention of throwing yourself out of it out of it i rolling. mean not throwing because you don't want to get your head chopped off rolling out of it sure that makes mm -hmm. it different yep totally yeah <laughs> um but once you roll out of it and then especially when the um parachute opens there's it's relief super fun that you're not dead fun so fun and all of that right but this is but so fun is i'm alive <laughs> That is not fun anxiety. That is that is anxiety terror and then relief fun not connected, right? So that's that's okay. that's where I wanted to differentiate. Like in the topics I'm talking about, there's this element of anxiety, but there's also this element of like curiosity or hopefulness or joy or playfulness that mixes with it that makes anxiety more fun. Mm. you know like like we've talked about like anxiety can be a motivator and we've talked yeah. about like anxiety can be a gift at times right and and protects and, us and yeah and so like I feel like this is the time where like it's the positive where anxiety can be a motivator like it's there it's you're still sweating a little bit your heart might raise a little bit you might be overthinking but it's in a fun way it's in yeah a, yeah yeah no, I get, I mean, I get it. I just, I never really thought about it as fun anxiety. I just thought of it as like, I'm nervous. I have anticipation, like, which I guess it's, it is anticipation anxiety, but I didn't always relate my experiences as, as, as an anxiety warrior with those moments of just before something happened mm -hmm. that was good or that I wanted. Right. Mm -hmm. And so but usually I do, but I just don't know if I ever would have used the word fun involved. You know what I mean? That's the word. Yeah. It's just interesting because if we can take a second and just like define fun, because I've actually been having this conversation with a few different friend groups, which is weird to say, but we've all been talking to each other about what is what does fun mean to us? And we all learn that it's something different. Yes. I've right? had this conversation. I don't know if I've had it with you. I had it like years ago because sometimes people would say stuff like that will be fun and it pissed me off because that's not fun to me. Right. And so without being like, oh, I think, uh, you know, sitting on the beach is fun. Like you don't have to give me like specific examples, yeah. although you can. But like what is like the general idea of fun look like for you? And what doesn't it include, I guess, if you could like broaden it. So the way I used to look at it is like fun included laughter and joy and playfulness. And the way I see fun now is it can also include peace and contentment, right? Like I used to mm. think fun was a more higher energy thing, right? Interesting, yeah. But I think I can, like, if someone was like, let's go on a walk, it'll be fun. I would have been like, no, it won't. It'll be loads of things, not fun, right? <laughs> But now I'm like, no, I can see there being fun in a walk, right? Huh. It doesn't mean we're laughing our heads off. It doesn't mean, you know, but there's some contentment fun in there. So I've, I've just like brought in my thing. Cause like, if I had approached the subject with you, like anxiety can be fun. I would have never use the word fun a few years ago. Mm. Right. Okay. Yeah. But I've just kind of allowed myself I used to be very rigid in my use of the word fun 
it had to be for things I specifically thought were a specific type of fun. And now I'm like, no, uh, there's lots of fun things out there. Fun. Yeah. yeah. I, I get that for sure. Okay. So how do you define fun? So it's, it's kind of similar actually. Like the one thing that has changed my feeling, it's not just about broadening it to mm-hmm. like, not just when I'm like being a goofball or I'm laughing really hard. Cause a lot of those things came up for me too. When I thought about it, I'm like, fun is when I feel like the, the greater feeling is when I feel free. Mm-hmm. Fun yes. is freedom. Like when I'm moving through a moment with total presence and abandon, mm-hmm. that is fun. And so it looks different depending on the activity, right? And then I started to think, like you mentioned, like, you know, doing one type of thing versus, say, taking a walk. And then I started thinking about how, for me, would I associate some of the things that nourish me as being fun? Mm -hmm. And so when I thought about that, I was like, it's a yes and no, but I feel like it's mostly a no. Like, Mm -hmm. I have found a distinction for myself between something that feels fun, which is what I said a moment ago, which is just like, I can just feel totally free to be myself, to say and speak how I, to to speak authentically, to be ridiculous, whatever. And I, and, or I feel like I can be present and safe in either by myself or in community in a moment. And then, and that encompasses certain activities. And then there are the activities that I do because they fill me up. Mm-hmm. They're not necessarily fun for me, but they're fulfilling anyway. They're nourishing. Mm-hmm. And those things are like taking a walk. Like I don't think taking a walk is fun unless I'm doing it with Adam or with a friend or something. Mm-hmm. That the interaction is what makes it fun, right? It's like being if I'm taking a walk by myself, I'm fulfilled. I'm at peace. I'm content, which is a different feeling for me. And so I'm like, is this walk fun? No, it's not. And so like, it's, I've almost gone in the opposite direction as you Mm -hmm. were like, I would have painted a lot of things as feeling fun or let's go do that thing. It'll be fun. Mm -hmm. And then now I'm like, kind of like, no, like I'm kind of doing what you used to do is I'm like, no, no, a walk isn't fun. A walk is wonderful. A walk is nourishing. (laughs) A walk is going to keep me healthy and safe. Like Mm -hmm. that's what a walk is. A walk isn't like, oh my God, this walk is so fun. I love sweating my ass off and you know, my right hip hurts and I feel my left knee clicking like, wow, this is so fucking fun. No, there's no fun there, but it's, but it still feels good. Right. Mm -hmm. It still feels wonderful. You know what I'm saying? So like, I'm kind of approached my relationship to fun differently than I used to too, but just like in the opposite way. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I I still think of like, it's just for me, what's fun feels like, like I'm free. That's, that's Mm -hmm. the feeling. Yeah. And so do I ever feel free when I'm having anxiety? Then is the question right. Related to this topic. Mm -hmm. It's like, I want to say not really, (laughs) I guess Mm -hmm. not really. I don't know that I ever would associate it because I wind up calling it something else. Then I'm calling it. I'm just anticipate. I'm just anticipating this thing or I'm excited or scared. I'm skited, right? Like mm-hmm. I'm not calling it like when something I'm doing is anxious and fun. Now I love the, I love the, um, the trivia example. I think that's like the only one that I could connect to where I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, that feels like it could be fun and also make me nervous. Like in it, in that way, yeah. But then when I added the, when I asked you about like, if it was just you, would it be different? It's like, yeah, it's, you need other people. I need other people in order for something to be fun. And if I also have anxiety or something, I don't know, that was a mishmash, but so I think it's important to, to label to sometimes like how we define yes. an experience. Right. Yeah. And, and also for us each to give our own definitions, because so many times we can be saying the same words to each other. And have totally different meanings with them, 100%. right? And it's really funny how you and I both have a relationship with the idea of fun. We've both examined this word and we've flip-flopped. Yeah. <laughs> we've done opposite ways of how we define it and how we experience it, which is like, right? right? It's yeah. like a good reminder for all people, right? It's like someone hears the word fun. We have no idea how they define that. 
Right. Exactly. And it may be, it may be related to a specific activity, but it may not. It may yeah. just be about like whatever feeling comes up, right? Like our, or, or their experience with said activity. Mm -hmm. And so I, what, something I thought of, um, was like opening up a kid's yoga studio for my, that was just like, oh my God, I have so much stress and anxiety about this. And at the same time, it's really fun and exciting. So mm -hmm. like, and it's ongoing, right? Yes. And so like, that's been an interesting thing for me to navigate is just like, it isn't just like, oh, we're in this one experience and then it's over and goodbye. It's like, this is work. This is right. It's like part of my life now yes. in a different way, you know? Is it connected though? Or is it kind of like skydiving? Is it like stress and then relief and fun? Or is it like a first, you know, date where I don't really know about that. But well, I yeah. mean like with a person too. Like you've had first dates with friends. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right. With people that may or may not be friends. So I'm using first date in a loose way, not in a No, no, no. I get I got what you mean. Um, I think that it is related, but I don't I don't know it because it's an ongoing experience that's changing that still continues to change and develop and mm -hmm. create. It doesn't feel like I would I would say it's nothing like jumping out of an airplane or engaging in <laughs> trivia for three hours or whatever, right? Like because yeah. it's it's ongoing and it's part of it's part of my work now, right? Is yeah. owning is co owning the space and navigating it. Right. So like that, it's sort of like, but it's still fun. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it's, sort of like it's it's stressful and it's chaotic and it's sometimes really overwhelming. And there's so many things to think about like all day long. Mm -hmm. Then at the same time, it's like, it still feels fun because it's hard. It's fun because it's different. It's fun because it excites me. It's mm -hmm. fun because I'm trying to, you know, it's, it's taught me to it taught me what I need to work on still and what I'm good at, you know, like, and so mm -hmm. it's, it's, yeah. And it so sounds it's like not, both. It sounds it's like both. I, it's separate yeah, it's and both. together. Sure. Yeah. Then yeah, I guess so. Yeah. I, I guess I just because most of the most of the experiences I find fun are like I won't call them one offs, but they're like I'm in a moment with a thing and then it's mm -hmm. done. Like if if I'm saying like, oh, I go teach a group of five year olds and I have a really good time during class, like, okay, that's fun, right? Mm -hmm. But like if I'm thinking about it as just like, oh, I didn't just go teach class, but I have like X, Y, and Z to do before and during and after that. Mm -hmm. Um, Then it's like, does it change it? A little bit, right? Because mm -hmm. then it's like, I'm not just in the moment anymore with what's happening. And so like the way I defined fun before, where it's just kind of like, I'm free and reckless abandoned. I can be in that for that 45 minute class. And mm -hmm. that's wonderful, right? Just like when we go teach anywhere, not just if it's your own studio, but like when you go do anything for a certain amount of minutes, you're like, I can throw myself at this and, and be in the moment. It's all great. But then afterwards, when there's other things to do that I don't necessarily like doing, yeah, it's like finding the fun in it too has been interesting. Mm -hmm. It's just like, even mm -hmm. though this is stressful and hard mm -hmm. and like, I don't want to navigate the issue that that lady's having with our website, but I have to, and I'm going to figure it out and I'll be fine. Like, and so yeah. then it's, it's, it can still be fun because it's a new kind of anxiety, which is mm -hmm. fucked up to say, mm -hmm. kind of. It's like, I'm excited about a new kind of anxiety. Like, no, but it's true. I'm like, yeah. and then I'm can, I'm that much more like relieved afterwards. Like I figured that out. Right. I didn't think I, or old me would have never figured that out. Right. But now you have to. So you do it. Right. And then you feel that like. The relief. Pride and, and relief right, right. and joy. And yeah. Basically back to our old episode of. <laughs> Our, our inside out review episode yeah. <laughs> anyway it's so interesting thinking about how anxiety is something that's challenged us for our whole lives could also be fun it's like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wild. it's kind of wild to think yeah and you know the thing is like with the first dates right like and now I'm talking about actual dating not friend dates although maybe with friend dates too although okay let me say this in two different ways like the younger I was I, I don't know how much fun it was, but I do remember like my first date with Dan, there was an anticipatory anxiety, but yeah. there was like a piece in me, which made me f fun and open to what would happen. Right. Mm -hmm. Cause when I was younger, the first dates had a lot more pressure of 
anxiety and people pleasing and all this, as opposed to when I went on the first date with Dan, it was like just being me. Yeah. Right. Um, And even now like that, I'm really trying to put myself out there and meet new people and make new friends. Like I can feel the anxiety of going into social situations with new people and feeling that social anxiety, but also feeling the excitement of what's, what's possible. And so that feels, that feels fun for me, right? To to hold both in the same, you know, in the same body, (laughs) both sensations. Yes, I agree. Yeah. And I've been on a lot more in the last couple of years, I've been in a lot more like friend, friend dates with new people or newer people. And yeah, I feel, I feel that very much. It's just like what, and when it's interesting that you mentioned like your first date with Dan and it's like, yes, you're maybe at a different stage of your life, but some of that I'm sure is just that like you were with the right person. Right. right. And so like, it does have to do with like the other person or the, the situation that you're walking into is going to send you messages and energy, right. That you're going to feel, experience, yes. see, whatever. And so it, that does contribute to the fun, right. It's just mm-hmm. like, oh, this feels aligned. This feels correct. This feels good organically like you just your instincts sometimes well I'll speak for me my instincts know when I'm safe to be myself yes and then I and then it's fun right yes yes and I yeah I felt like like before I even met him because it was kind of you know we met through okay cupid right Right. so we had just had a couple messages back and forth through the, the messaging thing but I felt like if anything we would have fun conversations to talk about even if we weren't that interested in each other. And at the time I wasn't totally certain I was even moving to Denver. Right. So it was a lot less pressure. Mm -hmm. So there was the social anxiety, but also the openness and the funness. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Love it. Yeah. All right. Warriors will take some time. Think about how these two emotions relate to one another. Do you feel like they do? Have we convinced you that they do have a place together? Or not. And fun. <laughs> or not. Right. You exactly. have other language for us. Yeah. Instead maybe take a moment fun. and define fun. Define it. What does fun even mean? What does it look like? What does it feel like? Maybe grab a journal, write some, write some stuff down. You think of this word and what pours out of you. You know, you can write down about experiences. You can write down feelings. You can write down all of it. Have conversations with your people about what fun means. I've really enjoyed. It's been fun for me to talk about fun with my people lately. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's just an interesting exploration of like, what does this mean? Can these two very seemingly polarizing feelings have a relationship? Do they have a relationship or don't they, you know? And so take take some time to explore that for yourself. Yeah. Marco, do you have a win of the week? win of the week? It's like your role. Um, that felt very NPR. Your voice, you're like, Margo, this next song goes out to Abby. Um, I do have a win. I, uh, last month I had done a first time like member rate at a new yoga studio. It was like really cheap. Like when you go to a new yoga studio, they give you like a nice first time rate of like unlimited classes. And I had met the owner at a street fair that Christy and I were working at promoting our studio, um, back in the beginning of June. And I just connected well with this, this owner. She was, seemed really sweet and she's, her studio is not that far from where I live. And so I'm like, cool, I've been looking for a new studio and re- trying to reconnect to my practice. Um, and so I started going and I, I love it there. It's oh, so amazing. Oh, that's a huge win. It's, it's a lovely community. And, um, the, the win on top of that is that, so I just committed to six months. So I, mm-hmm. I, you know, I'm paying monthly. It's a little bit more, it's still a decent deal like if for unlimited classes. Um, it's $90 a month for unlimited classes, which yeah, is pretty, pretty good. good. And because I know it will push me to go at least twice a week. Mm-hmm. And that's what I've been doing. I've been going once or twice a week. And now that I'm paying for it, it's like when I get my massage, like I'm going to go, you know? Mm-hmm. And so- Um, I've loved every class I've taken. I've loved all the instructors so far. And literally yesterday and today, I got to take two friends with me to class. They had never been there before. And I got some friend passes as a new member. And so um, my friend Erin came with me yesterday and my friend Avery came with me this morning. So it was nice to go go with some some folks I I enjoy hanging out with and also to just like 
reconnect to my practice because yeah. it's been, I mean, and everyone that does yoga or any kind of movement activity with any regularity over any point in, in their life knows that sometimes it changes, it shifts, mm -hmm. it goes away completely. It's different. It's, mm -hmm. and so as, and as someone who teaches, it's hard to sort of want to get on my mat myself sometimes mm -hmm. when I'm not working. And so I forgot how much, it's like, I forgot how much I fucking love doing yoga yes. and, yes. and not just, and we know yoga is more than just moving on your mat and breathing in community. It's a way more than that, but the, these parts of the practice that nourish me greatly, I've mm -hmm. missed. And it's like, I forgot how much I love it somehow these last yeah. few years teaching to some extent. Um, I have not been dedicated to my at-home practice, certainly. And so it's been, it's been really nice the last few weeks so far. And I look forward mm. to keep going. I love that. My win. That's a huge win. I mean, it is. Just hearing that, like, I, I so long for finding a really good studio. Took me a long time. Yeah, right. And time. it's like, it's like you, it takes a lot of work to find the right studio for what you're looking for, right? Yep. And then to really vibe with all of the classes and the different instruct, you know, like, that's yep. a lot. And that's a huge win. That's, a, yeah, it's, it's like, I mean, it it's like it coming great. home, yes. you know? Yes. yes, it does feel huge, actually. It really does. Because yeah. when we've been living here in this town for the past, it'll be eight years next month. And I try to, I've tried yeah. half a dozen studios and I just, none of them felt like home. None of them felt yeah. perfect, you know, and this one, I, not good, continues to feel great. And like I said, mm -hmm. I, I really milked the shit out of that first cheap month because I really wanted to find a new studio and I, yes. I liked the owner. And so when I walked in the space, it felt good. Mm -hmm. And since that first class, everyone, I've seen a different instructor every time and they've all been awesome. Oh, that's so And awesome. the people that are, that are attendees are very sweet. They're kind They're mm -hmm. you know, so, so far so good. I think I found my, my yoga home. So yeah, but eight years, you know, I mean, yeah, it's a long time. So sometimes you're really you know, it might be a while, but it's worth the wait sometimes. Yes. All right, warriors. Well, thanks for tuning in. If you'd like to connect with us for any reason, join our Instagram fam. We're at Anxiety Warriors Podcast. Or, and, or you can shout out, nope. And, or you can email us at anxietywarriorspodcast at gmail.com. Let us know your wins of the week, big or small. You can let us know of any topic ideas that you have, something you'd love to hear us chat about on the show. Or if you think you would be a fabulous guest or you know someone that would be an amazing guest, shoot us an email so we can um, connect with you. Please take a moment, smash the five-star rating on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're tuning in. You can like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. All of our episodes are uploaded for you over there. And finally, if you were feeling extra generous to yourself, really, to us, sure, but to yourself, you will hop in our show notes and click on the Threadless Merch Shop link and grab yourself something fun. A tank top, a mug, a beach towel. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's tons of different stuff on Threadless. It all shop. sounds fun. So fun. <laughs> I happen to find mugs very fun. <laughs> mugs are fun. I will, I will, that's a hill I will die on. Yeah. No, I, I, this, I just love that you use the word fun because it I very fun. much agree with you. It is fun. And I fun. chose three things to suggest that I find fun. Yes. I love it. I, love I wouldn't it. suggest, you know, or maybe a journal. Or maybe, uh, some of the bags, I probably wouldn't. Eh, I don't need a bag. So I, I wouldn't say that's yeah. fun. Maybe you think a bag is fun. We no. got them. I, yeah, I have too many I, bags. At some same. point, bags become not fun. But I can have a lot of mugs and still find more mugs fun. Because mugs are amazing. Mugs are where, where it's at. Everyone needs more mugs is where it's the hell I'm dying on. So Yeah. Yeah. Get well, one. get one. <laughs> it became very threatening at the end. <laughs> I love you. Get one only if you want to find something fun for you. And <laughs> but you must get it. Get the mug. Please us with your anxiety. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for going on this journey with us. We're grateful that we get to do this with you. Till next time.